We're working at the top of the house today on the main ridge. A ridge is the peak of a roof, often a gable, where two separate roof diaphragms come together in a straight level line. Typically it's the highest point of a roof. Now the rafters on the back side of our house are installed and ready to go. So half of the ridge is built and in place, pretty much. What I'm working on is the other side, on the jack rafters that come down the front and lay on top of the four and a quarter and 12 pitch shed dormer roof in sort of an overstack. These jack rafters are resting at the same pitch as our main gable, our main roof pitch, which is nine and a half and 12. So I put a nine and a half 12 plumb cut at the top and notch the bottom of each one in order to fasten it to a ledger, as you can see. After working with all of these eye joists for the past week or two, I can tell you it's feeling pretty good to cut into some real lumber and make rafters the good old fashioned way. Now I'm not going to take the time to explain what a plumb cut is right here because we have a nice video on roof sections and roof cutting techniques coming up that will be much better suited to explaining those conventional roof cutting terms. There's going to be a lot of ventilation going on in this attic, but I couldn't help but make these rough notch cuts here at the ridge board to just help it a little more. I don't know if this will actually make any difference or do anything worthwhile, but it sure can't hurt. You can see that the rafters on the shed dormer extend further past the beam they bear on than they have to, quite a bit. And what that does is create a situation where even though I didn't need to sheet this portion of the roof since it's going to be underneath the new pitch, having this extra length is making my life a lot easier by providing a working surface. I can just terminate this new little pitch right flat on the existing sheathing and get the job done much quicker, not to mention safer. Don't forget, I'm probably 18 feet above the decking on the second floor and 30 feet above the ground right now. I've stepped away from working on the ridge and jack rafters and have moved back to some of the other odds and ends on our roof systems. Things that you're already pretty familiar with at this point, and this is because on the back side of the house, we have one more gable, a gable dormer, that will come in and intersect with the main roof. This intersection between our main ridge and this new gable will sort of have to be dealt with all at one time. That's gonna be a theme that will come up several times as we finish this roof. There are 
several different intersections on this house that are going to take real special attention. In the back with our new gable meeting the main ridge. The intersection in the front here where the garage meets the house and the porch and the roof around and over the top of our winders where the ridge of the garage meets the main part of the house. We probably won't get real specific about how we are solving each of those, but we will try and convey the big picture and some of the tips that help in these types of general situations. It's easy to overlook, but I don't think this would be possible to do without a set of nail bags. They just make it fairly painless to have all the tools you need and all the fasteners you need, and they're out of the way most of the time. I've been setting up my nail bags in exactly the same way for 30 years, and in fact I have a video that I posted about what I carry and where I carry it and why I've made those decisions, whether I'm framing or setting up and pouring concrete. Thanks for watching, and keep up the good work. <laughs>